If you'd like to follow along, this project is available for purchase at the Monta Villa Sewing Center's Teachable site. You can purchase the project separately or join the club and save. Information on joining the club is available in the description below. This block is part of the yearly 8-inch block of the month club. Enrollment in the yearly club includes the general instructions course, which includes detailed information on what to do with your blocks once they're completed. Trimming, joining, sashing, invisible sashing, applique and raw edge applique, whole block backs, borders and corners, and how to bind the quilt once you've got all your blocks joined together. The general instructions are also available as a single course. There's a link in the description below. I use the Dime Monster Block Maker when making my blocks. If you are unfamiliar with the Monster Block Maker, check out this video. Needles and thread for this project, I would go with kind of my go-to for the quilting, the 9014 quilting needles. And for thread, I use just a standard 40 weight top thread and either a 60 or 80 weight bobbin thread. Here are the parts for our project. This is the back block. Depending on what you're doing, if you're doing all applique, you could do just the standard printed back. If you're gonna do the stitch blocks, I think I would just use a simple muslin and then do a whole cloth back. There's gonna be a fair amount of stitching with all those the stitches from the stitch blocks, but it's really up to you. If you have a really busy print on your back fabric, it will kind of cover up all of those stitches. So the back block, my front block in this case, I'm just using a white on white print and my batting. And then I have my spool and in this case, I'm just using uh, cork just because I think it's kind of fun. I'm using this for a wall hanging, so I'm not worried that this isn't overly flexible. And I haven't done anything to the back of this, so when I put this down, I'm just going to use um, probably a little bit of a glue stick to hold that in place. This is my spool fabric, and I have prepared this with an applique product. I fused that on before I did my cutting. For the applique product, you could use the Floriani Applique Wonder, the OESD Applique Fuse and Fix, or the Quilter Select Applis Stick. Any of those would work. I'll set up my jig just standard. So here's my back block, good size face down. Then my batting, which is cut smaller than my hole. That's just gonna sit in there. And then my top fabric. So this is all just standard. And I when I put my top block down, I press from the inside to the outside. If you're doing the all stitching blocks, you're probably gonna wanna make sure that you have fairly fresh tape to make sure that your block stays put. I'm having to press pretty hard because this is fairly well used tape. I am going to go stitch the basting border and the first color, which is going to be the placement stitch for my applique parts. I've stitched color number one, which is the basting border, and color number two. This is the placement for my applique parts. Normally, I would be stitching both of these in the same color as my background, but so that it's easier to see on the screen, I've done them in the colors of the design. For my spool parts, I'm just going to use a glue stick because I don't have an applique product on these and I'm hoping this will work to hold these in place until they get stitched down. Your applique part should just cover that stitching line. And I'll just hold that a second to make sure it kind of stays in place. And then again, this, my spool part has an applique product on it. And I just bend the edge, the, with the paper side up, I bend the edge in. Usually what will happen is the paper will stay creased and then you can just peel that away. And this should fit just inside of here. Like that. And again, your stitching should just be covered. All right. 
off to stitch the rest of the block. It will stitch all of the applique and then the stippling around the edge. There's our block all done. You just pull it out of the jig and then trim around. On this one, I used a variegated thread for the spool. I just think that variegated thread is very fun. This is the setup for doing either the borders or the corners. The jig is set up exactly the same as the standard blocks. This, I'm just using a muslin back, but you could use a fashion fabric if you'd like. Your batting, again, cut smaller, and it fits within that hole, and then your top block. So all of that is just like normal. The stitching, you have a couple of different options. You can use the border and corner blocks as main blocks, and if you want to do that, I've added a triple run line border. This is an example. If you wanted to use this as one of the main blocks, so the whole eight inch size, to set this up, I would pull up the border file first with the heavier stitching, and then add to that either the border or the corner. And when you stitch, you would stitch the first two colors, which is gonna be the basting border, and then the heavier triple run lines. And then skip, you would now be onto the second design. So then you would skip that initial basting border and just stitch the corners, because you've already got this part. I'm gonna stitch just one of the standard borders so that you can see what the border looks like. This is the first two colors of the first design. The first color is just the standard basting border. And then the second color is the triple run line divider. I'm now gonna skip the next color, which is the first color in the second design. That's the basting border, which I already have. I'm just gonna go straight to the decorative stitching. Here are samples of the corner and border blocks with the triple run stitch on the cutting guides. These could easily be used as main blocks. Here are my border and corner blocks that I'm gonna use for actual borders and corners. I've kind of just drawn the lines in here because I stitched with white and I wasn't sure if you'd be able to see. What happens here is on the outside edges, there is no batting, but on the inside here, you're gonna cut a quarter of an inch in in each direction here. This is gonna be the outside edge, and there is batting, and the same on the corners. You're gonna cut a quarter inch here, quarter inch here, here, and here, and then this is gonna be the outside corner. So in the seams where you're sewing things together, no batting. At the edges, there will be batting, so your quilt will be correct. So here I just line up my quarter inch with my stitching line and then trim. And then the same on this side. And I would just do that to all of my pieces. And so then this edge with the batting, that's gonna be my outside edge. So here's corners and again, so there's batting all the way to the edge, but on the edges that get stitched in, no batting there. So these would end up doing like this. Because again, batting here, batting there, and here. And then these would be your other corners. You would have other parts in here. I'll stitch that all together so you can see what it looks like. Here's the quilt with the borders on. We've got our stitched spool borders and then our applique blocks. The button borders are from the December project. I just thought that would be kind of fun to fill in there. 
And then here's a couple of the other blocks. So this is the whole block in the corner. And then here are just the stitch blocks. And again, this one I did, I'll pull that up a little bit. I did this one with the variegated thread, which I think is just kind of a fun look. These, you can just kind of spin them like this. I think these would make very fun borders as whole blocks. And then these are also the border block with the triple run line border and the corner block. These blocks could also easily be used as main blocks. That's it for this month. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next month.